The world held its breath, and then... These pages herald one of the most incredible feats in the annals of human endeavor. The dramatic triumph of mind, body, and spirit against all odds of Charles Lindbergh and the Spirit of St. Louis. But equally dramatic is the personal story that takes you into the heart, yes, into the soul of a man. Here are his dreams, his fears, his defeats, his victories. Here, too, are people, each important, vitally important to this story of a man who kept a rendezvous with the destiny of the world. I can make it across, all right. What makes you so sure you can make it? Well, Mr. Bixby, when I was a kid and the smallest in my class, I made up my mind that I was going to be six feet, three inches tall. And I made it with a half an inch to spare. My old man says flying is for the birds. Is that what he said? <laughs> and that if God meant us to fly, he would have made our bones as hollow as our heads. Brittle, isn't she? These papers say you're assigned here. Okay, but I will not tolerate that filthy crate of yours at this here field. Well, she's really a very fine little machine, sir. She flies like a dream and never let me down. Get her out of here. Yes, sir. All right, now fly straight to level. You're diving, father. Pick the nose up, fly right straight to level. There we are. The trees! Do you see them? It's your baby, Slim. You make the decisions. All we're trying to do is... All you're trying to do is give me an easy out. Well, thank you just the same. It just doesn't look as if it can be done. Maybe planes aren't up to it. Not yet, anyway. In ten years, perhaps, but not now. But it's got to be tried now, over and over again, until it is done. Can't you understand that? Thank <laughs> you.